morning, Bishop Timothy Byron McGee and Pastor Bernadine Bell McGee are honored to have you worship with them at 16012 Cottage Grove in South Holland, Illinois. We believe Jesus is Lord, building his kingdom is our purpose, and every guest or member is our priority. Wherever you are online, join, like, follow, and share. We can be found on Facebook and YouTube. Now, let's enter into our worship. Hallelujah. Here we go. Yeah, we say, I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten.
Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. If you will, just, be, just put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we truly thank you and we praise you for today, for all that you've done, just waking us up, giving us life and strength. We thank you for what you're going today. We just give ourselves to you. Move in this place. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Holy Spirit. Do what only you can do. What only you can do. And we thank you and we praise you for it forever and ever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless the name of Jesus. Well, you may be seated in his presence. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. All right. Get your Bibles. We're going to get right into the word of the Lord. And I've been instructed to hurry up. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Our scripture, oh boy, it's so much Holy Spirit been, has been giving me. I'm just going to share with you as much as I can. This one is, God is really trying to get us into the now manifestation. The now manifestation. And I'm going to explain that and t because my assignment is to help build our faith yeah. where we can take what we get in here out there and work it in our everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Spirituality is not good if it only works in church. The word of God is not good if it only works in here. I want to know how to take it out there and face my everyday situations that I'm dealing with. When I feel like something else or when I feel like getting in the flesh or whatever, I want to know what does the word say? I want that word. See, now, if you don't plant it in you, it won't come up out of you when it's time you need it. That's why David said, hide the word in your heart. Now that means more than just memorizing it. Come on, y'all. That means more than just reading it, though it's got to start with reading. Amen. Now, now, now I know the scripture says study to show yourself approved, but you got to start with reading it. That's right. <laughs> and let's not confuse information with revelation. Because it's different. See, see, when the scripture says in Hosea that the people perish for lack of knowledge, it never said they didn't know it. The very next verse, that's why you got to read above it and be, be, below it. The very next verse said, they had knowledge, but they did not apply it. So, knowledge that you don't apply leads to destruction. So, we got we to gotta work what we know. We got to act upon it. Faith is acting on what you believe. It's not enough just to believe it. You got to do something with it. Come on, y'all. Hmm? So, so in this now manifestation, I'm just reading some things and we'll get in the scripture here that Holy Spirit gave us in Ephesians chapter 1. Very familiar scripture. You all know it. Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to read verses 3 through 7. But your faith calls the anointing of God to begin to work and bring those things that you believe that you receive when you pray into manifestation. Now, I'm going to say that again slower because it's important. Your faith calls the anointing of God to begin to work 
and bring those things that you believe that you receive when you pray into manifestation. Notice I did not say that your faith caused the anointing to work to bring answers to your prayers. I said your faith causes the anointing, which is the power of God, to work to bring those things that you believe that you receive into manifestation. Now you can read that in St. Mark 11, 24. It'll tell you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. He didn't say what things soever you desire when you pray, you'll get it. Come on, y'all. We, we're good at reading things in the scripture. He said, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it and you'll have it. So you have to believe that you have it even before it registers to your senses. Come on, y'all. So you got to believe. See, when you say, uh, I'm talking about in general, when you say God's going to heal me, that's not believing that you receive it. Come on now. I, well, we, I better read the scripture and then we'll get, get into this. Because my, my, my message, the, the subject, I just intend, your wait is over. Oh, Rabba Shataba. I felt that. Your wait is over. Oh, Rabba Koshata. I felt that. Woo. Now, all of us have been believing God for things and expecting and praying and, and fasting and all of that. We're going to talk about, by the help of the Holy Ghost, we're going to talk about how to walk in it right now. Walk in it right now. See? God is not bound. Hear me good now. God is not bound by time. Time was not for God. Are y'all here? All right. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. I'm going to read it. And, and, you know, okay, there we go. What's the first word? Bless. Come on, y'all. Work with me and we, we can get out like I was commanded to do. <laughs> What's that first word? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath. Who hath what? Blessed. Who hath. Now, you English majors and you know folks that's got better education than me, what does hath mean? It's what? It's past tense, right? That means what? It has already happened. That means it's already. So why is you talking my bless me, Lord? When the scripture says he had. He has blessed us with some things. Now, again, y'all help me. Help me. What does all mean? So that covers everything? Amen. So he says that God, maybe, maybe, maybe we don't know who God is. Or maybe we're not having trouble with the God part. Maybe we're having trouble with the Father part. I believe that one of the problems or the downfalls of the church born again believers is we know him as God but we don't know him as father do you not know that Jesus made a statement in in St. John 17 I think it's St. John 17 20. I'm sorry I'm, I'm working you today back there if, if you can pull that up and we'll go back to this here can I just work this here just can I, just, can I just flow in the Holy Ghost here? 
Then St. John, if you can pull up St. John 17, 23. Look at, then Jesus said, I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that, that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. I want you to focus on that. And love them as thou hast loved me. I want you to focus on that. Hath loved them as thou hast loved me. Y'all get that? Okay, well, just in case you didn't, Jesus is telling you that the Father God loves you just like the same way he loved me. He don't love you no more than he loved me. Jesus said the Father God loves you to the same degree that he loves me. So God doesn't love Jesus any more than he loved you. Oh, Lord, y'all, God give, help us. You see, he says, and hath loved me as thou, loved them as thou hast loved me. So God loves you to the same degree that he loved Jesus. Now, I know, I know it takes the Holy Ghost to reveal, to help us with this, because that's just far out. The natural man can't grasp onto that. Do you mean to tell me that God loves Jesus? People say, his only begotten son. Did you not know that Jesus is no longer the only begotten son? He was only the only begotten when he was here. When he died, he became the first begotten. The reason he first, not because there's a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth. And he loves you just like he loves Jesus to the same degree. And this God, who is my father, you know, when people say, they, you know, people say this when they're praying. They say, I pray, you know, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When I say that, I say, God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Willis. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's your father. Your very own heavenly father. Now, you know what? He wants us to start acting like it. We have allowed religion to rob us of everything in the Bible. And people, oh, that's just being humble. No, that's being ignorant and stupid when it comes to the word. Right. I ain't calling nobody. You know, all of us was in that shape at one time or another. But we learning, all right? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now, 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 so he's, he's bringing us into, now can we go back to that uh, Ephesians 1? Watch this. Everything you need and wherever need has already been provided for you according to the word of God. Your faith reaches in the unseen and bring it into the now or the seen. Did you all get that? Everything. Remember in, in, in Genesis 1? And remember when God said, let there be? When he said, let there be, was not him creating. When he said, let there be light, he was calling it from where it was to where he wanted it to be. And when you speak his word, that's what you're doing. You're calling what already is in the spirit realm into the now, the seen realm. But see, we automatically think that everything is about waiting. Hmm? 
So, so the enemy uses that against us. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he has chosen us. Did you know you were chosen? Yes. You were chosen. He has chosen us in him. Now I'm getting ready to really bust your religious bubble. He didn't choose you when you got saved. The Bible said he chose you before the foundation of the world. We think Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Calvary only manifested what had happened before the foundation of the world. That's why when people say, oh, there's a new wave. God is doing something new. There's a new wave. There's a new wave coming. I just think sometimes, is anybody other than me thinking that what they call in a new wave is the same water? <laughs> it's the same water that's coming on the beach. Now, when they say that, people say what they mean when they say it. God is doing something new, but the mistake that we make is we think we throw away or stop what we already have and just pick up what is going on now. But now this is a, my example. A train. You got the, you know, the, the, what, the engine, the, the, and then they got the, the, the carts, right? And then the caboose. That ain't going to be put on until Jesus returns. Every, the new things are actually, is only a manifestation of prophecy. What we call the new things is a manifestation of prophecy that came forth. All we do is we connect what he is saying now onto what he did say. And that's how we're getting down the tracks. But if you throw away what you already have, see? All right, so he says, we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yeah. For we are chosen. He said, he said, we've been, now, I really want to bring this out. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Uh, we've been chosen before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us. He pre predetermined, predestinated, he predetermined. God decided whatever he decided about you before you got here to, to live in it. You were, everything that has to do with your life has been pre-ordered. You know how you place an order, and they say, place your order. You know, you can, you can pre-order this so that when it comes out, you'll get it, even if other folk don't be able to get it, right? Pre Predetermined. So you've been pre-ordered. Everything you will ever need. Sister, your heart was pre-ordered, child. Now, watch this. Your heart was pre-ordered before the other one ever went bad. Robo shot by Oh, I felt that one. God does not wait until we get in situations to rescue us. God! Woo! Glory. I feel God. My, my bald spot hair is rising. <laughs> Glory to God. He got 
got this thing together. You have not and never will surprise God. You will never have to worry about waking up one day and hearing God say, oops. Whatever you need, whether it's physical, spiritual, financial, what mental, social, emotionally, whatever you need, it has already been provided for you. All you got to do is, it's like if I come and I got a gift for you and I give her, what, 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 what you got to do? It is just that simple. You got to receive it. You first got to know by faith that it's for you. Because the devil will tell you, you don't deserve it, good. Because it's not based on your goodness. It ain't for you. Then he'll tell you, he'll tell you, now this is a good point, this is a good point, I'm going to make this point right now, that, 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 wherever unrighteousness is, it will always hinder faith from working. Now I'm going to break that down in a minute. Because, see, you think I said wherever sin is. Now, I'm not justifying sin. I'm just telling you what the Bible say. Everybody in Jesus' day were sinners. And they got healed. They got delivered. They got set free. There was not one born-again believer when Jesus walked on the planet. Because you can only be saved through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And that had not happened yet. When Jesus told the disciples to go, while he, he said, I give you power, it wasn't the same as what we got. Because they were not born again. Because the new birth only comes through the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, and none of that had happened. Well, how could they do it? Because Jesus had told them to. And you can do anything Jesus tells you to do. Now, this is my point. See, the devil knows that you will be hesitant and will not come boldly before the throne of grace if you have any sense of unrighteousness. Because he's going to make you feel guilty. He's going to condemn you. And that's why he tries his best to keep your past alive to you. Because he knows that that will always make you feel inferior. make you feel like you can't do it. He said, I give you power, but if you feel any sense of unrighteousness, that's why unrighteousness has nothing to do with what you do. Unrighteousness is about who you are. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Your righteousness is not your actions. Your righteousness is your position. And that's what we need to always be conscious of. Because if we're not, the devil will always take advantage of you. And that's why a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, people don't get that manifestation because they're dealing with stuff that happened years ago. And the devil keeps you bound with guilt and condemnation about stuff that you can't do nothing about. You can't go back and change it. All of us done did some crazy stuff. All 
of us got regrets. Yes. All of us have wishes and if I would have, would have, could have, should have, and all, all of us. But what can you do about it but put it under the blood? The blood enables us, because see, the blood does what you cannot go back and undo. Did you hear that? The blood of Jesus takes care of and does what you cannot go back and undo. Now, you ought to thank God for the blood right there. You ought to thank God for the blood. Amen. That's why it's not about you. Stop making stuff about you. Yes. Now you, you done put the spotlight on you instead of putting it on him. Everything I have, everything you have, everything whatever is because of him. Not because of you. All right? Now watch this now. He says, he says, he says that we're having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to his pleasure. His good pleasure. His will. Notice it then took all the emphasis off of you. It is because of his good pleasure. It's because of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made us, say that loud for me. Accepted. He has made us what? Accepted. He has made us what? Accepted. Shout it out. Accepted. Louder. Accepted. One more time. Accepted. He has, he has, he has, not you did. Right. He has made us accepted. Just look at somebody and say, I'm accepted. I'm accepted. Tell somebody else around you, I'm accepted. I'm accepted. Whether you like it or not. Because God didn't ask me if it was okay for me to accept you. So why are you running around here trying to get accepted and approved by folk that don't even like you anyway? We live our lives trying to please other folk that have standards that they don't even keep themselves. Come on, I ain't going ain't nobody, I, see, I ain't nobody going to like me, so I might as well go head on. He has accepted us in the beloved. Oh, now you really need, in whom? We're still talking about in him now. In whom, in Christ, in whom we have what? Redemption, redemption through what? His blood. We have redemption through his blood. Say, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Whether I feel like it, whether I, feel like it. Whether I look like it, I, like it. I, am I am redeemed. Period. I'm redeemed. Yes. Now you be honest, you don't feel like you redeemed all the time, but it don't change nothing. Sometimes I don't feel righteous. I have to remind myself it's not based on me. Sometimes I have, I wrestle and fight through doubts just like everybody else. And I have to remind myself, it's Christ Jesus in him. In him we have redemption through his blood. Now what's the next thing? The of Say that loud. The of sin. Louder. The of sin. Louder. The of sin. So, if we are redeemed and forgiven, why is it that our altars are filled with born-again believers 
trying to get what they already got. You can, we can call an altar call in our church and it's packed with saved folk. Still trying to get over what God has already forgiven them of how many years ago. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yes, yes. And the devil, he knows that if I can keep them doubting yeah. what the word of God say, when they need something, they're not going to be able to receive it because they're going to have problems thinking that they got a right to it. Because you base what you get from God on how good you are. Okay, well, I'm going to say it a different way. That, that, that good might have messed with you a little bit. But I'm going to use one of your words. You think you deserve what you get from God because you're holy. Now, that did something different, didn't it? Uh-huh, because, oh, no, ain't, ain't no goodness in me. Yeah, you think you got it because you're holy. Now, I'm not saying you, we're not supposed to be holy, so don't nobody just say, oh, Pastor Collins said we don't have to be holy. Now, that ain't the truth. That's not the truth. You cannot base whatever you get or need on your holiness because no matter how holy you are or think you are it's still as filthy rags because your holiness should be in him and not in the fact that you don't lie, cheat, smoke sn dip snuff or whatever I know y'all probably don't even know what that is snuff what is snuff? How you dip snuff? <laughs> or chew tobacco, whatever. Mm. So listen to what he says. So we, we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The riches of his grace. And I went through these, this, this scripture and, and because I wanted you to know that God is not basing stuff on you. Everything we get, he gives it to us because of what Jesus Christ has done. Because of what Jesus Christ has done. Now, I say that because, because I want you to I want us to move from waiting, I'm just saying it like, move from waiting on God and move into the receiving from God. Yeah. See, we don't have a problem waiting on God. But our problem is receiving from God. Because, again, we have all of these things, hindrances, that, that tells us that we're not, really deserving. Yeah. Now look at Romans chapter 8. I want to read something to you in Romans chapter 8. Say, my wait is over. My wait is over. All right. All right. Okay. My wait is over. Look, Romans chapter 8. Now, you may not can pull all this because I'm going to skip through it. Verse 16 and 17, verse 28, and then verse 31 and 32. So, I'll just read them if you. It says, the spirit, King James itself, but himself, talking about the Holy Spirit, bears witness with our spirit. So the Holy Spirit is letting you know because your spirit, that's the real you. So the Holy Spirit is going to bear witness with your spirit or with you that you are we are the children of God. Yeah. And if children, then heirs. Uh -huh. And joint heirs with Christ. Here we go again. Not only does the Father God loves us to the same degree that he loves Jesus, he said that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. That means we got equal. Yeah. That means 
means that Jesus Christ does not have more than you got. Because it wouldn't be a joint heir. It means just he just gave me some. But joint heir means equal. Wow, I dare you start meditating on that and just say, I'm a joint heir with Christ? A joint heir with Christ? And I'm around here struggling and begging, and I'm a joint heir with Christ? I'm not asking God for nothing that I don't already deserve. It's not too hard for him. No matter what it is you need, Jesus provided it. Do you not know when you read the scriptures, you find out that salvation and healing goes together. There's no such thing as I can get saved, but I can't live healthy. Not according to the word. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, you don't have to pull it. I'm just going to quote this here. And, and you show you how salvation, when you get saved, Health is yours. Now, that means that you don't have to beg God for it. You don't have to earn it. They're they together. Just like, now, Psalms 103. We all know that. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefit, who forgiveth all my iniquities and healeth all my diseases. See how they work together? Now, you, now for your, those of you that said that's the Old Testament, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. Remember in James chapter 5? James chapter 5 says, if any sick among you, do you not know that is a question? That's actually in the original, that's a question that he's asking. Is any sick among you? Because that should not be in the church. So he said, is any sick among you? He says, now if it is, call for the elders of the church and let them come anointing them with all. Then he says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. Y'all ready? And if they have committed sin, they'll be forgiven. Because, see, the church world says if such and such, if you, what, whatever you may be going through, if you're going through it because you did some things wrong and that's how you got it, it's still covered. Oh, see that? See that? I didn't grow up in church, so when I first, when I first, got saved and started going to church because I followed the teacher that witnessed to me and went to his church. At that time, my pastor taught that if you were a smoker and you, things happened to your body as a result of smoking, he says that was God's punishment. He taught us that. That was God's punishment that you have to live with as a result of what you did to your body. He taught us that. But I'm glad I got a little more sense now and learned a few more things. See? So, 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 here, once I get born again, once you get born again, you are no longer, hear me good, you are no longer, once you are born again, you are now no longer connected to the old you. Now, I ain't going to be able to finish this. I'm just going to give you something, you know, a little bit. Once you are born again, you are no more the same. You are a new creature in Christ. Now, you got a new 
DNA. What? Okay. Can I use you as an example? I, I, it's okay to use your first name? Sure. All right. Veronica. That's her. Are you saved? Yes, sir. But it's really not her. Because when she got saved, the old Veronica died. That's right. That's right. Now she's a new creature in Christ Jesus, just like you are. So your old whatever have been completely washed away. Now God does not see you the way you used to be. That's why he does not, re I am convinced the longer I live and the more I learn in the word, I am convinced that God does not see things the way we do. And a lot of what we say, come on, y'all. A lot of what we say, I'm, I'm about to close. A lot of what we say is religious teaching. Something we heard from somebody that heard something 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 from somebody, from somebody and preached it in the pulpit as if it was Bible. And what we did, a lot of times, we, we, that's why doctrine is important, hear me good, and dangerous. I'm going to say that, that's why doctrine is important and dangerous. Because it seems like when people come to church, they leave their brain at home. And people think that when you come to church, you're not supposed to think. That's how people have controlled us through religion for years. Because we were told that whatever comes across here, you're supposed to take it and believe it no matter what. Because I said it. Mistake, mistake, mistake. What does the Bible say? What does the word say? Faith begins where the will of God is known. And the will of God is known through the word. Through the word. Okay, are you, okay, let me just read, I'm not gonna be, I'm just, let me just finish reading this Romans 8. And I'm skipping through here. He says that this spirit bears wit the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if heirs, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. What shall we say then? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not, now this, this is really the scripture that I was getting to. Get this. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God did not hold back Jesus, why would he hold back healing? Why would he hold back blessing financially? Why would he hold back emotional, uh, uh, whatever it is that you need, why would he hold that back if he didn't hold the most precious thing that he had? Yes. Hmm? So, just, it's mine. Say that, it's mine, it's mine. And, I want it now. and I want it now. Yes, 
See, kingdom connection is faith which activates the power of God and causes release. Thank you, Sister Tiff Joy, for, this, for the song release because that's what God is doing. But you, you got to take it. You got to take it. Know that you deserve it. Not because of how good or whatever, but because of him. You're not saved because you was good. That's right. That's right. You're saved because you asked him to save you and received it, right? You do the same thing with all the other stuff that has to do with the kingdom. All the other stuff. You do the same thing. Second Peter, you don't have to read, just Second Peter 1 through 4 says that he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God is not limited, nor is he subject or controlled by your time. Start when you, and then we, we this is just, we sing songs that's embalmed with unbelief a lot of times. Yeah. Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. And when you don't get what you want, now you're mad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come by here, Lord, come by here. He said, he said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. <laughs> that's like, that's like, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here next to Veronica, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I'll be so glad when she get here. So, so, so we limit God, but God is not limited and controlled by our time. He's eternal. Yes. He exists in the eternal. Faith gets us out of the yesterday. I said, faith gets us out of the yesterday and the tomorrow and places us into the now, where the eternal, eternal God lives. Mm. Remember the man at the pool, 38 years, waiting, when Jesus came to him? It's like Jesus said, first he said, well, what do you, what do you need? When the, when the, when the man told Jesus what he need, Jesus said, okay, well, get up then. Because what he needed was present with him. Oh, y'all, did y'all get that? I said what he needed was present. He thought he needed somebody to help him in the pool. But the help was present with him. Now, your help is present with you. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait for it. He's present with you. Yes. You got to believe and receive. Yes. Believe and receive. I'm, 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 I am getting ready to close. Believe and receive. Believe and receive. I like something that when the, 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 the blind man heard that Jesus was coming, I almost said, when they saw that Jesus was coming, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they began to shout out, Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, have mercy. When they got Jesus' attention, they asked Jesus, if you will, if you, just if you will, if you will, Jesus said, I will. 
Now, I'm going to close with this because I want you all to get this. He will always say, I will to you. Everything and anything Jesus died for always has an I will on it. Stop. Stop basing. Stand to your feet, everybody. I'm, I'm going to pray and close, and then Elder Tiff, I think, is coming. Stop. Looking to yourself when you need from God. When you need, whether it's healing, whatever it may be, look to the one that has it, that has provided it. Don't base it on how good you are or how whatever you're not. No, base it on what he has done. Jesus said healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. That means that you have a right to it. It's been prepared for you. Whatever you need. And Father, I just take this time out right now to pray. <laughs> Every person that's in this place and those that are listening at the sound of my voice, whatever their need may be, Jesus has provided it through his death, burial, and resurrection. And I pray that each person will receive what Jesus has provided. We thank you for supernatural provision. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have given us and provided for us through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks for joining. We are so honored to have you worship with us today. We hope and pray that you have been encouraged and inspired. If you like to sow a financial seed, we have provided four ways for you to conveniently give. Join us here every Sunday at 9 a.m. And in the words of Bishop McGee, don't worry about anything, but trust God for everything. See you next time.